Hi everyone. Welcome to Shark AI. My name is Chandan Sashwat and this is the second video for statistics. So the first topic which we are going to cover is hypothesis. So if you have not watched the part 1, please do watch because you need the sample populations and standard deviation and the mean to understand the hypothesis better. So if you have not watched, please watch the part 1. So uh, now we are going to discuss about the hypothesis. So what is hypothesis? So uh, hypothesis testing is a tool of making statistical inferences about the population data. Okay. It is an analysis tool that tests assumptions and determine how likely something is within the given standard of accuracy. Okay. And hypothesis testing provides a way to verify whether the results or experiment are valid. So. Uh, if we will take an example, suppose you have a, uh, sap, a pencil of 10 centimeters, you have thousands of pencils of uh, 10 centimeter of length and I am claiming that each pencil has a 10 centimeter of length. Okay. And you just want to test that, but you cannot, uh, you cannot length each and every pencil. Okay, so what we will do is we will just take the sample of some samples of the pencils and try to do some experiments and try to measure by using the those samples that whether I am saying that all the pencils have 10 centimeter of length is correct or not. So this is my hypothesis testing. This is actually called my hypothesis testing because I am testing that what I am saying that the uh, mean of the pencils is 10 centimeter is correct or not by using the uh, population distribution so that this is called the uh, hypothesis testing okay and uh, when we are doing the hypothesis testing uh, we have to set a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis okay for performing this hypothesis testing this helps to arrive a conclusion regarding the sample obtained from the population. Okay. So now uh, what is null hypothesis and what is alternate hypothesis? So we understood what is hypothesis. So we have to now, uh, we have to now construct the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So in probability and statistics, the null hypothesis is a comprehensive statement or default status that there is a zero happening or nothing happening. It is denoted by H0. So basically how I remember is uh, it supports the current business scenario. So always remember that whatever the business is going on, the null hypothesis will always be supporting the current business scenario. Okay. I'll give you some example for that. And then comes the alternate hypothesis. So alternate hypothesis is opposite to the current business scenario or opposite to the null hypothesis. Okay. The same is say the alternate hypothesis is an uh, opposing theory for the null hypothesis opposite to the current business scenario and it is denoted by HA okay so this is null hypothesis and this is alternate hypothesis now we'll see some examples that how to uh, set the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so suppose you have uh, new heart medicine okay new medicine reduces the risk of heart attack okay based on some data it is saying that new medicine reduces the risk of heart attack so how will we set the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so null hypothesis hypothesis i said you that it supports the current business scenario so new medicine reduces the risk of heart attacks that means it's saying that new medicine will reduce the risk of heart attack so what is current business scenario in the current business scenario it is not reducing correct so that will be your uh, null hypothesis new medicine does not reduce the risk of heart attack and alternate hypothesis is yes it reduces the risk of heart attack okay second one is buying stock during uh, down market will earn higher returns okay so in the current business scenario down market will not give you higher returns correct because uh, it's saying that in the down market it will give you a higher return okay buying stock during down market will not return you the higher returns okay and alternate hypothesis is buying stock during down market earns higher returns 
ओके इट इज अपोजिंग द नल हाइपोथिस एंड नल हाइपोथिस दिस इज सपोर्टिंग द करेंट बिजनेस इनारियो ओके द थर्ड वन इज वी वॉन्ट टू टेस्ट वेदर द मीन जी पी ऑफ स्टूडेंट इन अमेरिकन कॉलेज इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम टू पॉइंट जीरो सो करेंट बिजनेस इज इज सेइंग दैट जी पी आई इज टू पॉइंट जीरो एंड अल्टरनेट वन इट इज सेइंग दैट नॉट टू पॉइंट जीरो ओके दे होप यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस नाउ वी आर गोइंग अहेड विद द हाइपोथिस टेस्टिंग एंड द पी वैल्यू ओके इन हाइपोथिस टेस्टिंग the p value is used to indicate okay before going to this curve let me um let me show you something let's understand this p value and the other stuff which we are going to see so as a whole crux i am giving giving you the idea that what we are going to see in further sections and how it will be so suppose i have a cookie shop okay where i am claiming that the average cookie weight is 500 grams okay and standard deviation is 30 grams so what does it mean it means that if i will plot a distribution curve then my mean will be here 500 grams and here in 530 gram here it will be 470 so my 68% of the cookies will be between 470 to 530 and uh, this is 440 and this will be 560 so my 95% of cookies will be uh, in this uh, in this interval 440 to 550 560 okay so this is what i am claiming so how can i test whatever i am saying is right or not so what i did i have taken 25 samples okay and i have plotted a distribution curve and i can see that uh, my distribution got little bit shifted and i am getting here the 485 okay it's not 500 but i am getting mean as a 485 okay and uh, and uh, sample size i have taken is 25 and this is 485 so what i will do and uh, the z formula is uh x minus mu by sigma by root n where your x is a uh, sample mean this is population mean this is a population standard deviation this is number of sample size i will just try to uh, standardize it so that i will be finding the value whatever i am saying is correct or not okay so now the mean is coming 485 okay so when you put all this like x bar we have some uh, sample mean what i am getting is 485 okay so it will be here 485 and this is 500 this is population mean a uh, population is standard deviation 30 g and this is 25 so once you will calculate you will get minus 2.5 and when you convert all this so it will be something like this it will be here zero and this 485 will be somewhere here minus 2.5 so what information it is giving should i uh, accept what we are saying is correct or not or should i reject so for this what we will do is uh, we will go to the z table okay so since we have standardized every value this whole value so we'll go to the z table and try to find what is the value of minus 2.5 so when you will go there then you'll see what is the uh, your probability value for uh, this 2.5 okay for this z value what is your probability value so when you'll go to the z table and you'll see it is 0.0062 uh, okay this is the value you will get in uh, you'll get in your uh, z table so from this point to the extreme left point okay so this is actually called your p value okay so this is giving you the same thing this is giving minus 2.5 to the extreme left in the g distribution what is the p value for this z value so it will it is giving me this value 0.62 the p value of it so this is called as a p value 0062 so this is how we determine the p value now 
uh, what I am claiming is correct or not. Okay, so based on the confidence interval, I can say that. So I am saying that I just want uh, my curve. Uh, I just want to be confident ninety five percent. That means is is my minus two point five is falling under the ninety five percent of my confidence. Then I have to go to the Z table and check what is the value for ninety five percent confidence. Okay, in the left side. So if this value minus 2.5 is greater than Z table value that means it is falling beyond this 95% of uh, confidence interval. So I will reject my hypothesis and say uh, that whatever I am claiming here is not correct. Okay, And if minus 2.5 is less than the Z table value then I'll say my assumptions is true about the null hypothesis and I accept it. Okay. So this is the whole crux of it. And now in the various way, we will see it. Okay. Yeah. In hypothesis testing, P value is used to indicate whether the results obtained after the conducting a test are significantly uh, significant or not. It also indicates the probability of making an error in rejects, rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis. So this always this value is always a number between 0 to 1. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, probability density center possible. So suppose this is a sampling distribution and I'm getting a point here. Okay, so I'm getting some value here. Uh, that how this we will get uh, by using this G score, which I will explain you later, but you just try to understand that this uh, uh, curve we are converting into the uh, z score so the value which we are getting is like this and p value will be uh, from this point to the extreme point if we are convert if we are taking the 95 percent of the data so under this curve will be our p value so this is the p value and in the probability you know that continuous value we cannot take the probability okay so we have to give a region to get the probability discrete values yes you can take the probability if you have dices or cards but if i'll say you that the rain is going on from last three days and what is the probability for this instance so you will not be able to give the probability of that so we you have to give the within the one inter, one minute or two minutes or three minutes so you have to give a region okay you cannot give the probability for any discrete point you cannot give a probability for any continuous point okay so this is our object p value this also we will see uh, when we will do the mathematics then we will see this also the p value set at green area is the probability of an observed or the most extreme result assuming that the null hypothesis is true so if I'm saying my null hypothesis is true, that means my current business scenario is true. So from where to where it is true. So I'm saying that from here to here, my null hypothesis is true. Okay. And if my point is uh, somewhere falling here, then from here to here, okay, this will be my P value. Okay. So this is also a graph. So this is if this is the critical value, I am saying that I am uh, okay. Let me draw something. So if I draw normal distribution, okay, and it is something like this. So you know, uh, if I am saying this area is ninety five percent, okay, and this area is suppose ninety percent. Okay. Okay. And I am saying that if some point is here, okay, and some point can be here. So I am saying that only consider the point which comes in the 90% of the region. Okay. So this will be the point. If I am saying that uh, point do not consider which falls uh, beyond the 95%. So which point is that? This point. So basically, uh, in the hypothesis test, we will try to find out the point, okay, the p value, 
and uh, then according to the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis we will try to predict whatever we are saying is correct or not if this point will fall in our uh, confidence interval or the uh, you can say that confidence level then we are saying okay our assumptions is true if this point falls uh, beyond the the value uh, which we have here confidence level then we are saying our assumptions was wrong so this is the whole crux of it okay so now let's go to the ppt and uh, you can see here these reasons are so uh, if i am saying that this is the 95 percent so after 95 percent this region and this region so if the point falls here then it is region for rejection if the point falls here rejection for region and if it falls here then we are accepting our assumptions okay and this i will explain you later okay and there is something called significance level so you can see here the significance level in hypothesis test the significance level alpha is the probability of making the wrong decision when the null hypothesis is true it is denoted by alpha so this is your uh, significance level okay so we do not consider these points and this is my confidence level so if i i am taking 95 percent confidence then my, if my points fall here then i am confident to say that yes my hypothesis is uh, my assumptions or hypothesis is null hypothesis is correct okay otherwise i'll reject it so this is significance level uh, confidence interval this is also the same thing okay so now we are going to see the <clears throat> confidence interval formulas so if sample size is greater than 30 z confidence interval will be <clears throat> x bar plus minus zc so zc is the value corresponding to the confidence interval in z table okay so if the number of sample is greater than 30 we will look into the z table and if the number of sample is less than 30 then we'll look into the t table so this is the z confidence interval and this is the t confidence interval okay where you can see that in the uh, z confidence interval x bar is the sample mean you have given a standard deviation and then n is your number of terms and in t confidence interval this is also the mean this is also the uh, value corresponding to confidence interval in t table and then s is your uh, uh, sample standard deviation and uh, n is sample size so basically it will give you the confidence interval from where to where i can select my point okay like this is the confidence so yeah starting from this point you can see here we have plus and minus both you can see plus minus so it will be if it is giving that uh, from 1.2 to 7.2 so that region is my confidence interval okay here some value is coming so if some value is coming here like uh, minus 1.22 you can say plus 1.2 so between these two points i can select the i can select uh, my uh, confidence interval okay this is my confidence interval and if any point falls in this then i'm going to accept my null hypothesis okay yeah, it's a, a little bit hard to understand it now but as we we will go deeper into this then you will uh, be getting everything okay so this is the formula for this just uh, remember it because when we'll do some we'll check some numericals then we'll do this confidence level this is also the same thing okay this is the confidence level one minus alpha alpha by two so we denoted by alpha um, sample is standard deviation so we have seen the standard deviation formula is uh, square root of sum of xi minus xi square by n but when we are talking about the sample always remember in the sample we have not n it's n minus 1 okay why we do n minus 1 some of the interview they will ask you that why we take n minus 1 because uh, to make this number a standard deviation little bit 
bigger and that's why we do it with a n minus 1 okay okay now um, it comes that how many types of hypothesis are there okay so we have two kind of hypothesis test that is the z test and the t test which we are going to discuss it now okay other tests are also there but we'll see that in the uh, later on but we'll see these two only the z test is a way of hypothesis testing that is used for a large sample size okay that i already told you that if uh, sample size is large then we'll do the z test if sample size is less than 30 then we'll go for t test always remember this it is used to determine whether there is a difference between population mean and the sample mean when population standard deviation is known okay so basically we uh, when we have to test the uh, mean of sample and mean of population and we have to come up with a conclusion then and when the population standard deviation is given okay it can also be used to compare the mean of two samples okay so this is the formula z equals to this is your sample mean minus your population mean divided by standard deviation of population by square root of sample size so this will give you the z value okay so this is the value we were talking about it falls under the reason okay we'll see how all this and uh, z test for two samples so when we are checking the two sample pop uh, to compare the means of two samples then normal uh, this is the formula okay mean of one minus mean of two where x1 x2 are the mean of two samples mu1 mu2 are the hypothesized difference between the population mean sigma 1 sigma 2 standard deviation n1 n2 sample size so these two are formulas for g test for one sample and z test for two samples and assumptions of g test is uh, the sample should be independent from one another first one is that and then population from which the sample are taken must be normally distributed population standard deviation must be known and the sample size must be greater than 30 okay and uh, one sample versus two sample g test the two sample g test is to test the difference between means of two groups okay whereas that one sample g test is uh, basically we test the uh, higher population versus the sample mean size okay t test so this is another type of testing that is the t test the t test is another method or hypothesis testing that is used for small sample so sample size should be less than 30 it is also used to compare the sample mean and population mean okay it is also used for the same however the population standard deviation is not known so as you remember that in the z test we have known this one okay population standard deviation but in the t test we have given the sample standard deviation okay the mean of two sample can also be compared using t test so this is all this is the formula m minus mu divided by s by n m is your mean mu is the, uh, mu is the theoretical value standard deviation and variation set size okay two sample is also the same mean of the sample standard deviation and then uh, s1 is to standard deviation x1 is to mean of the sample and in its sample size test t test and these are the assumptions of t test dependent variables are interval or ratio okay the population from which samples are drawn is normally distributed so this was also for z distribution samples are randomly selected okay the groups have equal variance the t statistics is robust it is reasonably reliable even his assumptions are not full limit okay so this is contradicting all this robust it is not necessary that all the assumptions should meet okay and difference between the z t t test and t test is you can see the sample size we have already seen if the sample size is greater than 30 we'll go for z test if sample size is less than 30 we'll go for t test mm -hmm. okay and uh, in z test population standard deviation is known here we have uh, 
sample standard deviation is known okay and normal distribution and question it asks g is do this population differs here do this sample differs okay so this is the difference between z and t test now it comes to the one tail hypothesis testing okay so one tail hypothesis testing is done when rejection reason is only in one direction either side of the side so if we have tested and we are uh, we are just finding the value in this side of the region then it is one test of one uh, tail test or either this side or this side of the region we are trying to find the value then it is called the uh, one tail hypothesis testing so if we are doing either the if we are doing in this side then it is the right test right tail hypothesis testing if we are doing this side then left tail hypothesis testing and uh, you can see the h naught the population parameter is less than equals to some value h1 the population parameter is greater than some value so if it's the right tail it will be h naught will be this area and if it is the left test then it should not will be this area okay so this is basically two kind of test and uh, here is the two tail test hypothesis so here the our uh, null hypothesis is population parameter is equals to some value and population parameter is not equals to some value so not equals to means it can be this side also it can be this side also that's why it's called two tail hypothesis testing but in the previous slide it is saying that it is greater than some value and here it is saying that it is less than some value okay but two tail hypothesis testing it is saying equals to some value okay and how we do the hypothesis testing so steps are set up the null hypothesis by correcting correctly identifying whether it is on a left tail right tail or two tail hypothesis testing okay set up the alternate hypothesis choose the correct significance level alpha and find the critical value calculate the correct test statistics zt and p value compare the test statistics with the critical value or compare the p value with alpha to arrive in a conclusion okay or otherwise decide the null hypothesis rejects or not so uh, you can find the z value z table in the internet and in the z uh, z table you can find the confidence levels okay so what is the z value for 70% of the confidence so it is 1.073 and 95% 1.960 90% is 1.645 so you can find this table in internet so now we are going to see some of the numericals for z test and t test so here is our first example example one it was it says the average weight of the dumbbell in a gym is 90 lbs however a physical trainer believes that the average weight might be higher okay a random sample of five dumbbell with an average weight of 110 lbs and a standard deviation of 18 lbs using hypothesis testing check if the uh, physical trainer's claim can be supported for a 95% confidence level okay so uh, you can see here that i have sample of 5 okay so as i told you that if sample is less than 30 we will go for the t test so we'll go for a t test here so what are the information we can uh, drag from this is okay so uh, first thing is that we have to uh, set the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis okay so h naught is it is average weight of the dumbbell in the gym is 90 lbs so current business is 90 lbs okay so h naught is equal H0 believes that mu is equals to 90 okay and alternate hypothesis the physical trainer it opposes this that means alternate hypothesis says that mu is greater than 90 okay 
as you can see physical trainer believes that the average weight might be higher okay so alternate hypothesis is higher a random sample of five dumbbells so the sample size is you can see we have sample sample size n is equals to five we have and then average weight of 110 lbs so uh, I, we have x bar or you can see that the sample mean is 110 okay okay uh, a t formula was if you remember x bar minus mu divided by s divided by root of n okay where your this x bar is uh, mean of sample this is mean of population this is your standard deviation of sample divided by sample size so we have sample is equals to 5 x bar is equals to 110 and then we have we need the standard deviation so standard deviation is mm, the standard deviation is 18 lbs so standard deviation is 18 okay and support is one 95 percent of confidence level so 95 percent of confidence okay so all this value we have x bar we have x bar is 110 minus mu is 90 okay because we have uh, given here that population mean is 90 okay so 90 divided by s so our s is standard deviation 18 divided by square root of sample size 5 okay so when you uh, find the value of this you will get around 2.484 okay so this is our t value okay and 95 percent of confidence so if you check the t distribution table so always check for this confidence what is the t uh, what is the t value for 95 percent of confidence so t value whenever if you are checking for the z also check for it like as i have showed you in the z table what is the confidence value for z so similarly we have a t table where you have the confidence value so the t confidence value is 2.132 okay so you can compare these two and you can see so if i draw here okay i have this t distribution and this is the acceptance reason okay and it is saying that it is this value is 2.132 so this value will lie somewhere here 2.132 so i am saying that we have to take this area if i go to the right tail testing so i have to go to this area right tail why because we are looking only for greater than okay so we have to look for this area and any value as i told you any value greater than this one will be rejected and any value if smaller then it is accepted but my value is 2.84 somewhere here 2.484 so you can see that it doesn't fall in the reason of confidence level so our null hypothesis will be rejected okay and we can say that our average size of uh, a dumbbell is greater than 90 lbs okay okay what we did we just set a null hypothesis as the trainer believes that dumbbell average size is 90 but uh, but actually uh, somebody also thinks that this weight is greater than 90 so my current business is 90 an alternate hypothesis is greater than 90 and then we have all this information then we got the t value and then in the 95 percent of confidence level what is the t value and then we have seen that it is not falling in this reason okay because this value is greater than this value and we were hoping that this value will be lesser 
so we are rejecting the null hypothesis and saying that it is greater than it is greater than uh, 90 lbs yeah so now uh, we are going to see an example of z test so this is the question the average score on a test is 80 with a standard deviation of 10 okay that means this is the population mean and this is the population standard deviation with a new teaching curriculum introduced it is believed that this score will change on random testing the score of 36 students the mean was found to be 88 so this is the sample mean okay and the sample size is 36 with a significance of 0 0.05 so 95 percent confidence or 0 0.05 significance we have to check in the z table what is the value of it okay so uh, this value is 1.96 significance value okay so let's do this so first thing is that set the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis so it is saying that it is the average score of a test is at is a standard division with a new teaching curriculum was introduced so null hypothesis says that my mean is 80 okay one second is equals to 80 alternate hypothesis says that mean is not is equals to 80 okay it's not saying that greater than less than or something it is saying that it's a uh, score will change but which side it will go it's not saying increasing decreasing or where it will go so this is not equals to 80 in the previous example it was thinking that the dumbbell size will increase okay mean will increase but here it is saying that it will change but which direction it is not saying so we have to take it as not equals to the 80 okay and then we have given here okay now the values so we have given uh, mu is equals to 80 population mean population standard deviation was 10 okay you can see here standard deviation of 10 and then sample size is 36 sample size is 36 and we have mean found 88 so you can sample mean is 88 what else we have and significance level is 0 0.05 so if you check the, okay this is a z test okay this is not the t test why because we have sample sizes greater than 30 how many sample size we have 36 so we are going to go for a z test so in the z test if you check 0 0.05 significance or 95 percent of confidence then it comes 1.96 so if the number is greater than 1 96 then we will reject the null hypothesis okay that the mean is 80 so the z formula was z was x bar minus mu divided by uh, population standard deviation by n so here it will come as 88 minus 80 divided by 10 by 6 36 so it comes around 4.8 so you can see that 4.8 is greater than 1.96 okay so 95 percent of your confidence it will cover 1.96 okay it is going in the positive side so here it will be 1.96 so till this point till this point it will take this value but here it is coming 4.8 this is the furthest point so we have to reject the null hypothesis that mean of the population is 80 we can see that the mean of the population is not 80 and okay, what was here the average score on a test is the standard deviation believe that okay so new teaching curriculum introduced believe that the score will change so yeah when the new curriculum is increased mean is changed okay so this was a g test 
so now we are going to see a question on confidence interval so hope you remember that confidence interval i have shown you what is the z confidence interval formula and what is the t confidence interval formula so if n is greater than equals to 30 then it will be a z x bar plus minus z sigma by root n and if it is less than equals to 30 then confidence interval x bar plus minus tc and s by root n and you can see this value okay so now uh, let's try to solve that a random sample of 30 apples was taken from a large population so sample size is 30 so we are going for a z test on measuring their diameter the mean diameter of the sample was 91 millimeters okay with a standard deviation of 8 millimeters Calculate the 85% confidence limit from the mean diameter to the whole, whole population of the apple. Okay, so let's do this. So sample sizes then it's equals to 30. Okay, and you can see here mean diameter of the sample was so mean was 91. Okay x bar so for sample it is 91 okay and uh, standard deviation of 8 millimeter so s is equals to 8 sample standard deviation 85 percent of confidence so uh, if you go to the z table and you look for the 85 percent of confidence so it will the value is 1.440 okay so now we'll try to find the values so as the formula says z is equals to x confidence interval uh, z x bar plus minus z s by root n so x bar we have 91 plus minus z value is 1.440 this value okay then to s s is 8 by sample size 30 so when you try to solve it it will come 91 plus minus 2 plus minus 2.1 okay got to come here 91 plus minus 2.1 okay so 85 percent of confidence will cover this area okay that means fill this do this somewhere here and do something like this 91 and you can see here plus minus 2.1 so 91 plus 2.1 this will be 91 minus 2.1 okay so this area will be i'm 85 percent confidence if some point falls in this region i can say that i'm 85 percent confidence about this okay this one this one so this is the confidence interval now there will be exercise for you for confidence interval um, you can see an automotive engineer wants to estimate the cost of the repairing a car that experiences a 25 miles per hour head-on collision collision he crashes 24 cars the average repair is this the standard deviation of 24 car sample is okay so you can see here the standard deviation of sample average repair cost for the sample that is the mean of the sample and this is the sample size okay so just try to find out this one take it as a homework and try to do this so you can also try this one the average score of the class is 90 however a teacher believes that the average score might be lower the score of six students were randomly measured the mean was 82 and the standard deviation is 18 with the 9 0.05 significance level use hypothesis testing to check if claim is true 
so everything is given here so which test you will go for what is the sample size here what is the confidence level so everything is here try to do this as an assignment so these two you can try the confidence interval which i have shown and this one yeah please post if you have any issues so now we are going to see the correlation this is very important because uh, every time whenever we are fetching the data from some database or when your client will give you some data for creating the models then we have to always check the correlation correlation means uh, some algorithms which are very strict about the correlation that the correlation should not be there okay so we have to check and uh, whenever we will do the pre-processing for some particular algorithms then we'll see how the correlation works but as a theoretical and uh, not using the python we will see what is the importance of it and how it works but before uh, going into the correlation what you should know is what is categorical variable and what is cont continuous variable so continuous variable is something if you have uh, given the number 1 to 10 then how many numbers you can generate if you have to generate the float number also you can generate uh, infinite numbers correct so if within the two points you can generate the infinite numbers then that is called the continuous variables okay like the rain uh, in a year the rain you can say today is 10 millimeter tomorrow is 12.5 so that can be anything okay then uh, then you have so many uh, continuous variables we have and then categorical variable so if you have some limited number of uh, uh, observations so that is called the categorical variable like if i say you that i have only seven colors okay let's stick to the seven colors so that will be a categorical variable suppose the um, you have some thousand people and they are wearing the shirt of the this seven colors okay so the color will be <coughs> color column will be the categorical variable because uh, that is limited that is only seven okay and uh, categorical variables are also known as uh, uh, nominal or uh, not nominal uh, discrete variables okay and uh, the type of it is like binary variables where you have only two outcomes yes no head tail something nominal variables and ordinal variables so ordinal variables where which you can order well, uh, as an example finishing place in the race so first second and third so you can order it right but if you say the nominal variables like colors so you cannot arrange it the colors red color is not greater than white color correct uh, brand name species name okay so this is categorical variable so categorical variable will always be limited number in the data set okay continuous variable unlimited so these are the two now the correlation uh, correlation refers to the statical relationship between two entities in other words how two variables move relation to one another okay positive correlation a positive correlation would be one when two variables move okay let's go to the whiteboard and see how uh, suppose you have an equation you can see y equals to uh, x1 wait let's say we have uh, y is equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus c okay <clears throat> so suppose i have this value okay this value is a feature that is called weight okay and this is also weight okay this weight is in the kg okay and this weight is in the pound so if uh, if i ask what is the relationship between these two so this will definitely be li a linear relation 
when you try to plot this x1 versus x2 so we already know that um, if uh, nearly 1 kg has 2 pounds okay so if <coughs> x is 1 okay then y will be 2 it is 2 then it is 4 okay so point will be somewhere here somewhere here and somewhere here so it will be something like this okay so we can see the exact relation between these two so this is called the correlation the relationship between these two uh, these two labels or these two independent variables you can say okay so this is your correlation so the the relationship and when there is no relation then how it will look it will look like this you cannot predict what if x1 value is this what will be the value of x2 okay no relation negative relation will be something like this you have x1 you have x2 when it is here then x1 value will be here this is here and this is here so this is your correlation okay so strong positive correlation we have seen weak weak negative correlation moderate negative no correlation now one thing always remember that uh, when it is one we'll we'll see the formula so when it is one that means they are highly correlated minus one means they are highly correlated but in the negative direction and zero means this one okay and this one i will also explain you when i will talk about the uh, linear regression because linear regression one assumption is that there should not be any correlation between the independent variables so i will explain you more when i will explain through the python okay the correlation coefficients so what is that the correlation coefficient r is a summary measure that describes the extent of statical relationship between two interval or the two level variables so as i explained you the x1 and x2 so it is talking about the statical relationship between the x1 and x2 the correlation coefficient is scaled so that always okay it will be always be between the minus one and plus one okay and close to zero means a no relationship plus one means positive strong positive correlation minus one means strong negative correlation type of correlation coefficients so we have pearson correlation spearman correlation and kernel correlation okay so uh, we are going to talk about the pearson correlation only okay so what is pearson correlation so pearson correlation is most commonly used for linear relationship between the two variables the stronger the correlation between two closer it will be okay so this is also correlation and this is the formula r x y uh, xi minus x bar yi minus y bar so this is the formula we have for the pearson correlation so this rxy value will uh, be between minus one to plus one okay when you put the all this value uh, i have given some example so how to find this the pearson correlation coefficient what is the value so there is an example there are two holdings company name a and company b with the data of the previous three years being analyzed so 2018 the company a has uh, this value company b has this value and you can see up to three years this is the values Aver average value of company a 55.97 average value of company b is 76.93 so now we have to find the pearson correlation and always remember the pearson correlation is only for continuous values this will not work with the uh, discrete or the categorical value okay always remember this pearson correlation is only for category only for continuous values okay so company a this is the company a data and uh, this is uh, 55 minus 44 so average because if you look the formula we have to minus with the mean value of it x and y so uh, this minus this this minus this and this minus this so this is the a value this is the company b this is this value 
b is mean minus this okay so this minus this this minus this and this minus this so this is the value now this one we found out now this value the square of it okay so a square this is the value and uh, a into b so we are we have to multiply so you can see here finding these two value and multiply so this value this value multiplying these two value and we are getting the value here okay this is the value and this is the sum of 337.89 this one and now a square this is the square and this square so a square b square and square root of this into this so you can see square root of this into this so square root of a square and square root of b square so this is the value 0.998 so 0.998 what i told you if it is near to one that is it is highly correlated so you can see here it is you can say that company a and company b is highly correlated okay now as i told you that pearson correlation we only uh, apply for continuous value so what about the categorical value how do we find it so categorical value uh, we find using the chi square test of independence okay what is it so chi square test of independence is non non parametric hypothesis test you can also use this test whether two categorical value variables are related to each other or not so it is only for categorical variable okay always remember if you have a data set mixed data set where you have a continuous value and the uh, categorical value and when you will run the pearson correlation then you will get only relationship between the continuous values and if you run the chi square test then you will only get the relationship between the categorical values okay so you have to run both these always remember this so x square is equals to observed frequency minus expected frequency square by expected frequency okay so now we are going to see with an example how it works okay so contingency temple when you want to perform a chi square independent best way that is frequency distribution okay uh, the frequency distribution is also called the contingency table okay example is six months after the intervention the city looks at the outcome of 300 households only four households are shown here okay so uh, household address this is the household address this is the intervention that means how we have intervented the house and what is the outcome so when we have made a phone call then they started recycles when we have control that does not recycle control does not flare recycle so now we have to find the intervention and the outcome frequency okay so uh, we are setting here the null hypothesis whether a household recycle and the type of intervention they are related or not so i uh, an alternate hypothesis intervention uh, null hypothesis is they are not related okay current business scenario as i told you so this is these two are i am saying not related and uh, alternate hypothesis they are related so now look intervention flare and recycle does not recycle okay so flare pamphlet so how many uh, house are recycled at 89 and how many is uh, how many uh, houses does not recycle so 9 phone call 84 does not recycle 8 control 86 and 24 so this is the row total okay this plus this this plus this this plus this and this is the column total this 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 okay and this is n total number of observations so this is this one total of this one so 300 okay now the expected value as you can see that we have observed and the uh, expected value so how to find the uh, expected value so expected value equal to row total into column total by total number of observations okay you can see here uh, in 98 okay row total into 259 column total divided by 300 
ओके सेम फॉर दिस हेयर नाइन्टी टू टू फिफ्टी नाइन डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री हंड्रेड सो दिज आर द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यूज एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यूज ओके सो ऑब्जर्व एक्सपेक्टेड एटी फोर पॉइंट सिक्स वन सो हेयर एटी फोर पॉइंट सिक्स वन थर्टीन पॉइंट थ्री थर्टीन पॉइंट थ्री ओके सो दिज आर द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यूज नाउ एंड ऑब्जर्व वैल्यूज एज यू वी दिस इज ऑलरेडी ऑब्जर्व वैल्यू ओके नाउ ओ माइनस ई एज इट से इज दैट ओ माइनस ई स्क्वायर बाई ई ओके सम ऑफ सो ओ माइनस ई इज ऑब्जर्व माइनस एक्सपेक्टेड सो दिस माइनस दिस दिस माइनस दिस दिस माइनस दिस सो दीज आर द वैल्यूज देन स्क्वायर ऑफ इट ओके then o minus e square by e so this is the uh, this is the values and then x square equals to sum of all these values okay chi square so this this represent the chi square so chi square is equals to 9.79 now here comes the degree of freedom you can find the critical value in chi square critical text table or using statical software you need to know the number of find the critical values so a uh, degree of freedom for the chi square test of independence number of variable degree of freedom we find like this that number of variable one group minus one into number of variable two group minus one so total number of groups in one is three and in other two uh, you can see here we have only cycle and does not recycle okay and here we have three fair control and four call okay so 3 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 that is 2 that is the degree of freedom and test significance we have taken the confidence level of 95% and uh, degree of freedom 2 and then critical value based on this degree of freedom if you go to the uh go to the t table and check what is the value of it then you will get 5.99 so 5.99 value is greater than the critical value because critical uh, 5 point critical value this value chi square value is greater than the critical value that means we have to reject the null hypothesis and we have to say that they are uncorrelated okay so this is how the correlation works but this is the theoretically i explained you using some random samples but yeah uh, when we'll next we'll uh, learn the machine learning that is linear regression so i will show you through the python through the heat maps and various uh, uh, various uh, code that how you can calculate the correlation and how to remove the columns based on the correlation so let's discuss up discuss about anova and ancova so actually last time i forgot to explain you about the degree of freedom so let's discuss this first and then proceed with the anova and ancova so what is degree of freedom so consider the data sample consists of five positive numbers the value of the five integers must have an average of 6 if first uh, four of the items within the data sets are 3 8 5 and 4 the fifth number must be equals to 10 okay because the uh, first four numbers can be chosen at random the degree of freedom is 4 okay so it basically it's saying that if you have to select five numbers where the average is 6 and you have chosen the first four numbers then you have to choose the uh, the last number as 10 to get the average of 6 so you have uh, you have a freedom to select the numbers till 4 but fifth number you have to select as per the requirement because our requirement was to get an average of 6 so we have to select 10 so okay so this is called the degree of freedom till what number you have the freedom to select suppose somebody is saying select the sixth number where your sum is 21 and i am selecting the first five numbers as 1 2 3 4 and 5 so the fifth number should be 6 you cannot take 7 or 8 to make it sum as 21 okay so always the uh, formula for this is number of sample minus 1 so till the 
last minus one you have the freedom so this is called the degree of freedom so here you can see we have five samples we have to select so five minus one four so degree of freedom here it will be four okay so this is the formula now let's go ahead with ANOVA so what is ANOVA ANOVA is analysis of variance okay and you can see the analysis of variance tell you if there are any statistical difference between the means of the three or more independent groups okay so if you have in the t-test if we have two groups then we used to uh, when we used to compare the mean of the samples and here if you have uh, more than three or more than three independent groups then we can compare the statistical differences okay how suppose the uh, independent variable a brand of suppose there is a brand of cold drinks okay you have various cold drinks brands and you want to just compare that what is the price of uh, three cold drinks brands okay so you can do it using the ANOVA and one way ANOVA is uh, we basically do it with the uh, one independent variable and uh, two-way ANOVA is we do it with the two independent variables so one independent variable as an example as a crop researcher you want to test the effect of three different fertilizer mixed on the crop yield you can use one way ANOVA to find out if there is a difference in the crop yield between three groups so here only we have this fertilizer okay three different fertilizer mixed on the crop crop so effect of fertilizer on the crop only okay two ways if you are researching which type of fertilizer and planting density produces the greatest crop yield so here we have two things fertilizer and the plant density these are the two variants we have so this is the two way uh, ANOVA okay and what to select uh, as a null and alternate hypothesis Null hypothesis will be uh, there is no difference among the groups that is mu1 is equals to mu2 is equals to mu3 okay and alternate hypothesis at least one group differs significantly from the overall mean of the dependent variable that is somewhere like mu1 is not equals to mu2 equals to mu3 not equals to mu4 okay uh, any one group differs from the uh, significantly from the overall mean okay so uh, this is the formula for uh, or the table for determining the ANOVA so we have to find the variance within the group variance between the groups okay and here the sum of squares okay this is SSB and you can see here MSB mean sum square of the so you can find this table in the internet and when we do in the Python actually we don't have to do this manually we have some functions to do it okay but at least as a data scientist you should know that internally how it's going on so so this is the sum of square calculations degree of freedom mean square and this is the f value based on this f value we decide we have to reject the so same like the z table and t table we have f table also to accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis okay so this is the formula and table suppose there is an example okay let's say a trial was run to check the effort effects of different diets okay positive number indicates weight loss and negative number indicates weight gain check if there is an average distance in the weight of the people following different diets using the ANOVA, ANOVA table so this is the table low fat low calorie low protein and low carbohydrate okay so these are the effects of different diets so as we have already seen that we have to take the null hypothesis that all the means are equals okay an alternate hypothesis the means are not equal okay so as per the as per the uh, ANOVA table we will try to find out x minus 6.6 .6, uh, this is the x1 mean will minus and square minus and square so same like an over table calories 
3 we will minus n square minus n square so same like x bar x bar is uh, total mean is this one plus this one plus this one plus this one divided by 4 that is 3.6 number of samples 4 so degree of freedom will be 5 minus 4 is equals to 5 uh, 5 minus 1 4 ssp and ssc and an over table now we have to construct so you can see this is the ssp this is k minus 1 and minus k df3 as it was there in the table okay so this is constructed in the same way then f is equals to msp by mse this divided by this so f value as uh, in the ex question there is no significance level is specified so we have taken 95 percent of confidence that is 0 0.05 so f value when you choose for uh, 0 0.05 you will get 3.25 3.24 okay so f value and this is 8.43 so when you will check we will get 8.43 is greater than 3.24 thus the null hypothesis is rejected and it can be concluded that there is a uh, mean weight loss in the diet okay I reject the null hypothesis and uh, 0 0.05 is your confidence and 3 is your degree of freedom 1 and this is degree of freedom 2 between the groups and errors okay this is 3 and this is 16 3.24 so this is greater than this though so this is reject the null hypothesis that means the mean of the groups are not equal okay so but uh, the problem with the ANOVA is it will tell you the groups are equal or not but it will not tell you which group has uh, which group is not matching the mean with the others okay so that is the problem with ANOVA so how to overcome with that uh, we will see now there is something called Tucky's test okay by using the Tucky's test you can determine that which which mean is not equals to the other means okay so as per the definition Tucky's test this is also called Tucky's test Tucky's procedure or HSD also honest significance difference or honest significant test okay Tucky's test determine the individual means which are significantly different from the set of means. Tucky's test is a multiple uh, comparison test and is applicable when there are uh, there are more than two means being compared. Okay, for two means utilization a T test. And if you have uh, two means to compare, then you can go for the T test. Typically, Tucky's test is utilized after an uh, ANOVA test. Okay, analysis of variance after ANOVA has shown in the significant difference exists in the determine whether the where the differences exist tuck okay so it says that it will let you know where the differences exist okay tucky test is calculated through a pairwise comparison of all means on a significant difference is shown where the pairwise difference between the two means exceed the value compared as so on a significant difference this is the formula q divided by ms where ms is the mean square value compared in the ANOVA n is the number of samples in each group and q is determined from the studentized range distribution table okay now we will uh, look into the python how to do this ANOVA and the Tucky's test if you have to compare the mean of three groups then import all these packages pandas numpy scipy stats model and suppose these are the three list or the three values we have for uh, the car speed okay so the, we are running one way ANOVA on A, B and C and you can see that uh, one way ANOVA result we have P value is 0.0125 so we can see that the overall P value for ANOVA table is this which is less than 0 0.05 so P value is less than 0 0.05 so we can say that uh, we have uh, we can reject the null hypothesis and we can say that the means are not equal okay now we have to go for the Tucky's test to determine that 
which data is the means where the means are not equal i mean this mean is not equal to this one or this one is not equals to this one so how is it so for that we have created a data frame with the same data okay and then we are performing the takis test and then we are getting this value okay a group a to group b uh, reject the null hypothesis true a to c reject the null hypothesis false b to c reject the null hypothesis true why because the p value between a to b is 0.0158 so this value is less than p p value 0 0.05 so we are rejecting this one this is also less than 0 0.05 so we are rejecting this one and we are accepting only this a to c because this value is greater than 0 0.05 so this mean is equals otherwise these two are not equals so thus we uh, would conclude that there is a statistically significant difference between the means of group a and b and b and c but not a stat not a statistically significant difference between the means of group a and c okay so as i told you that um, a and c we have the same means but not with the a and b and uh, b and c okay so this is all about um, anova now let's talk about the anova uh, ancova okay so ANGOVA stands for analysis of covariance okay it is used to identify the static statistically uh, difference between means of two or more independent group after controlling one or more explanatory variables uh, that is called a covariate so uh, variables that influence a response variable but are irrelevant to the study are known as covariates okay so this what is covariate so covariate may affect the outcome in the study for example uh, you can say that you are running an experiment to see how corn plants tolerate drought okay level of drought is actually a treatment but is not the only factor that affects how plants perform size is also as a factor affects a tolerance level so you would run a plant size and covariate so this is a, about the drought so if you have a drought and you are are doing some treatment on it but not only the treatment matters the matters is what is the size of the plant okay that is also the thing which it matters another way like you have uh, uh, some calves okay and you have taken the you have given some treatment to them for weight gain and uh, you can say the covariate here you have is their initial weight because when you are doing something for the weight gain then initial weight should also be known otherwise you will not be able to find out the exact weight gain okay so these hidden factors are actually called the covariate a covariate can be independent variable that is uh, or it can be unwanted confounding variable adding a covariate to a model can increase the accuracy of the result okay so if you are not adding it it may decrease the accuracy of model because if we are not considering what is the uh, weight or initial weight of the calf or what is the actual size of your plants in the drought so these things uh, these things will also matter when you are building your model so this is the formula cov of x y is equals to x minus x bar y i minus y bar by n minus one okay so let's understand the ancova with an example so a tutor wants to know if three distinct teaching and learning methodologies have an adverse effect on the test score but c also wants to account for the student's current grade in the class so if we know the current grade then only we can say that uh, what is the test score they are obtaining okay so methodology you can see here we have a b and c and this is the current grade of the students and this is the test score what they got so we just want to know that there is an effect of these methodologies on the final test score or not so ANCOVA data we are passing this covariant as current grade and between the methodology okay and uh, we are when we are uh, so the package which we are using is penguin 
Penguin and uh, we are importing Anu and Gova here. Okay. And this is what we are getting. So methodology as you can see is yes, SF matlab sum of square df degree of freedom. This is the f value and this is the p uncorrelated p value. So 0 0.025542. Okay. And NP2 is partial eta square. So we basically stick on this p value. So you can see according to the ANCOVA table, p value study methodology is 0 point this and this value is less than 0 0.05 okay 95 percent of confidence so we can reject the null hypothesis that each of the study studying methodology results in the same average test score even after controlling the students current grade in the class so yeah we are uh, rejecting the null hypothesis so this is the end of your statistics yeah, there are a lot of more things to know, but I will be covering all those things with the algorithm like Bernoulli's distribution. I will cover in the NAEP base and then uh, wherever it is required, um, I will just cover that with the algorithm. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching my video. Thank you.